Welcome back to Crafted in Florida. Today we're talking baseboards. I'm going to show you how to cut and finish your baseboards so that you have perfect looking trim all around your house. Watch this video and I'll show you how to do it. So if we're doing an outside corner when it comes to mitering, Ideally, you want to be able to stand your piece up. Depending on what size saw you have, you may be able to stand the piece up like this. Set your miter where it needs to be. In this case, we're doing a 90 degree outside corner. So you split that in half, 45 degrees is what we're looking for. Place the saw where you're looking to have it. I always test it. Putting that blade right there, make sure that you're not going to cut too little or too much. You want to be cutting right where your, your mark is. And you can go ahead and cut that piece. So we have that going from left to right. We need to flip the saw around to make it go from right to left to get us an outside mine. That gives us a perfect 90 degree outside. These are typically the stuff I like to have with me. You gotta have your nail gun. I use an 18 gauge brad nailer. I like to have my pin nailer 23 gauge and then I like to have instant adhesive CA glue for when I'm doing returns and sometimes on the outside corners it's nice to be able to just instantly glue those pieces together and make sure we have that done. We'll get to the caulking once we've done all these pieces. I'll show you how we, I caulk everything and fill the nail holes and this obviously does not have studs behind it. This is just for examples but ideally you want to mark your studs Put all your nails into studs because that's going to help hold it a lot better. So let's get started with our outside corner. Now, typically, your outside corner it's usually a longer piece, so you wouldn't be able to glue it and then put it in because you're usually working with eight to ten foot pieces. Since we're not doing that, what we want to do is we want to make sure before we nail anything in. What you're doing is you're taking the inside part of the miter and you're lining that up with the corner. That should give you the perfect 45 on the outside. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start by nailing this other side over here. Make sure I've got it where I want it. You always want to nail on the bottom because you know there's going to be a bottom plate that you'll be able to hit the stud. So in case you messed up on marking your studs, the bottom inch and a half should be a stud down there. And so you should always have something to nail into at the bottom. And then on the studs at opposite angles, that'll help keep it from pulling out left to right. So now that we've got this side done, I like to, when possible, use the CA glue so I know I'll get it. This again probably isn't going to work as well with the longer pieces. You can't use the CA glue. That's what I like the pin nailer for. It kind of just helps hold it in place. A little CA glue on that piece. A little activator on this piece. And then we slide it in. Hold it for about three seconds. Now you've got it in place, and that'll hold plenty strong enough so you can shoot your nails in. So now that's in, down, at an angle, bottom, at the opposite angle. 
And again, if you don't have the ability to use the CA glue, it's a little bit too hard to work the long piece. Pin nailer. In the meaty part of the trim. You're getting a little delicate when you're up here near the top part. Hit that meaty part. Go from both angles. That'll help hold it on in place and keep that miter nice and crisp. Alright, so when we're doing an inside miter, we're going to use the coping technique. This is going to give us a tight joint and it'll help us when there's movement. There's always expansion and contraction in wood. So as things get colder or things get more humid, depending on what the moisture and temperature is of the air, there will be movement in the wood. If we did an inside miter, there's a chance over time that you'll get some splitting, even if you do caulk it, and you won't have a clean joint. When we do the coping technique, that problem is basically solved because it is such a tight joint. We are cutting into the piece, and there's not a lot of wood there to move. So, what you need is you need to run one piece all the way to the wall flat like this. So that piece is already done. So the second piece is going to be an inside 45 degree miter. And then we will cut that excess off so that it will fit right up against that other piece. Let me show you how we're going to do it. All right, now we're going to move to the inside corners. So, as I mentioned before, we are going to take this straight edge piece and we're going to nail that in place. Okay, see I ran that all the way over the wall. We'll then take this piece and we're going to get rid of all of this that is visible. All of this right here, this wood that you see, needs to be gone. How I like to do that, I like to use my coping saw for at least some of the tighter spots, and then I'll use a jigsaw at a slight angle for the meaty parts. I have seen people use a miter saw for that part. All right, once you get that in there, there it is, ready to caulk. Right here, we had a nail not penetrate. It did not go all the way through. That'll happen from time to time. Maybe you hit a screw. Maybe it just hits funny. It's going to happen. Get yourself a nail set and your hammer. We're going to do that until it is below the surface. Once it's below the surface, Come back with your spackling. This is what I like. The nail holes. And the reason I like that for nail holes is because it doesn't shrink. So I like to set it up a little bit. I'll come back with that same wet rag. Moving across the joint as to not pull any of it out. One thing I've found with the spackling, if you don't wipe it off with a wet rag or sand it after it's dried, you will see that spot when it comes time to paint, which is not ideal. Trust me, I've learned from having that problem happen. Make sure you clean that off before you paint. Otherwise, it's not going to look good. You're going to be able to see. It. But, like I said, as far as it lasting a long time, the spackling, much better, no shrinkage. You just gotta make sure you clean it off. Now it's time to caulk the baseboards. You always caulk the baseboard. Much cleaner look. It is pretty simple, a little tedious, but definitely worth it visually to have that baseboard caulked and painted and finished forever. Okay, Let's see if I've got enough caulk in this tube. Things you'll need. The caulk itself, a caulking gun, and a wet rag. I can start from the corner. Run a nice little bead. Maybe a nice little bead. Yeah, that's a little too much. Alright. Came out a little funny because it's an old tube. 
push the caulk down into the top between the baseboard and the wall. Okay, once that's done, take your wet rag, wipe it across there. Usually it takes a couple of wipes. And we've got it. This is all prepped and ready to paint. So that's how you do baseboards. Pretty simple. Hope you learned something. Hopefully this was informative. If you do like it, hit that like button. Subscribe. Leave a comment if you do something different. We'll see you next time on Crafted Floor.